This is One on One. We're pleased to uh, welcome Linda Schwimmer, who is president and CEO of New Jersey Healthcare Quality Institute. Good to see you, Linda. Good to see you. Thanks for having um, me. You've joined us on our sister program, Caucus New Jersey. Yes. Different uh, discussions, but I want to talk to you about the Affordable Care Act. You've actually said that we need to improve it. We can improve it. We don't have to scrap it. Some people talk about doing that. You say, hey, there are pros and cons. Let's improve it. How? Let's improve right. it. All right. I think we can improve it. I don't think we should scrap it. Uh, New Jersey's has a long history of being innovative in healthcare. Back in 1993, we actually uh, had an exchange for individuals and small employers. We actually said a long time ago that it's not fair to price health healthcare based on the health status of an individual, which was a pretty innovative, progressive thing to do. You're talking about pre-existing conditions. Right, exactly. Pre-existing conditions, not blocking that out, or even charging based on someone's health care status, which was mm -hmm. allowed in some states. So if you had a condition, you could actually be charged more. Um, we said for a long time, that's not right. There's certain things that you can charge on, um, such as uh, age. Um, but other than that, uh, health care is, is a fundamental need that people have, and we have to make sure that people are able to get care. And is it a right? I think it is a right. Yeah. You do? I mean, it really is a matter of life health and death. Health care is a right. I think so. It's a matter of life and death. I think that in, a, in, a, in an open society where we, particularly in a democracy, in a capitalist democracy, where we want people to be able to live and support themselves and their family, how do you do that? if you're not healthy or you can't get the care that you need. Talk about uh, improving a little bit more. Specifically, what should be done with the Affordable Care Act, so otherwise I think, known as Obamacare? Right, I think going back to that question you just asked, is it a right? I think it's a right, but it's not an unlimited right. So it's not an unlimited resource. We can't afford to give everybody absolutely everything that they might want because what happens is if we keep spending more and more on health care we start to crowd out everything else we're seeing that now at the national level we're seeing that here in new jersey we spend more and more on health care and then what that means is we have flat wages people don't hire more employees because they can't afford to pay them benefits we can't afford to fund our schools we can't afford to hire new teachers etc you know it's just crowds what does that have to do with out. the aca the affordable care act well, the Affordable Care Act, there's, since the Affordable Care Act was passed, there's been a real focus and energy and, frankly, innovation on ways to reduce costs and to improve quality. So things like looking at the waste in the system, looking at what's a more appropriate use of these resources, looking at, say, more integrated care, having primary care providers who you are connecting with, who are reaching out proactively and saying, you need to come in, I haven't seen you, let's take some tests, let's make sure you're on the right medication, and then having a conversation with their patients. But, let, but Linda, let's do this, Linda, let's bring it down a little closer to the consumer. Okay. In terms of improving the Affordable Care Act. Is it also fair to say that one of the problems with it is that people still struggle to understand it and that if they go on the so-called exchange, if they go on healthcare, Mm -hmm. .gov during a period of time where you can purchase one of the plans. Right. That it's still unnecessarily confusing, complicated, and they're having a hard time with it. Yes. I think so is that part of the problem? That is part of the problem. With the Affordable Care Act. That's part of the problem is that when you go on to healthcare.gov, especially in New Jersey, because we have the federal system. Let's make it clear right. the state did not step in and say, we'll take this over. Governor Christie said, no, feds, you do this. Right. Some states said, we will take it over on the state side. That's not what Governor Christie decided. Right. So, so we're part of the federal, we're part of the federal system. We use healthcare.gov. And healthcare.gov has gotten a lot better in the three years it's been in existence. And hopefully it'll continue to improve. But it needs tools for consumers. Such as? OK. So some of the other states have this, and the state-run exchanges, and there's lots of apps that are in development around this. What we need is something like this. I go in as the consumer. I plug in. Here are the doctors I want to see. Here's the medication. 
here's what my income is, here's a general sense of how much savings I have and my risk tolerance, right? What does that mean, my risk tolerance? So, so I'm on the stock market. Well, it's kind of like that, though. Really? Right? It's kind of like if you were, it's kind of like with um, like auto insurance, right? You can pick a $500 deductible because you want to know for sure that most things are going to get covered, or you can pick a $2,500 deductible because you know I've got savings, I'm a really safe driver, I'd rather pay l less premiums, and if I do get an accident, mm -hmm. I'll have to pay more out of pocket. It's a similar kind of analysis with healthcare in oh, that. Oh, oh, respectfully, and I'm sorry for interrupting, why can't I just know how much a procedure is going to cost? And then make a decision. So that's that. But wouldn't it be more transparent? So that is one of the hugest problems with healthcare you just hit on is that we are still not at the point today where you can go into a doctor's office or you can go into a surgery center and say, how much is this procedure going to cost soup to nuts? Because you're going to get a hem and a haw. And they can tell you what they will charge you, but they can't tell you what every single other provider in the, the, chain, of, the chain of the process well, is going to How am I going to make charge. a decision about whether I'm going to move forward on this procedure? See, I, I understand a saying. I recently had some dental work done. Not, this particular procedure wasn't covered, OK? Right? Right. But I asked the dentist, how much? Because that's the number. Right. I decided it was worth it. Cosmetically, it was worth it. Right. If I didn't think it was worth it, I wouldn't do it. But my point is, isn't that important information to know? That's absolutely important information to know. And we have a real void here in New Jersey. We don't have. Is it just New Jersey? It's not just New Jersey, but New Jersey mm -hmm. is worse than a lot of other states on that. And one of the reasons why is. We don't have requirements for reporting that information. We don't have what's called a claims database or an all-payer claims database where this information is available to consumers, to researchers, to app developers to start creating tools that we can could use. Could we have something like that? We absolutely could have something what's like that. What's standing in the way of that? <clears throat> what's standing in the way Seriously. of that is honestly vested interests who have that information and view it as market power for themselves and they don't want to share it, and the lack of laws and regulations requiring it. How much of this is political will or the lack of political will on the part of government leaders? A large part of it is. I think there are government leaders that are pushing for this, and I think eventually they're going to be successful because the only way the Affordable Care Act will work right is if people have more information. So if insurance companies, hospitals, and government officials came together and wanted this, any reason why it wouldn't happen? No. Those are the players. Absolutely. Did I miss anyone? Pharmaceutical companies. What do they have to do with it? They're Because of the drug prices? That's right. That's right. <clears throat> All right. Give us a reason to be hopeful. Uh, because listen, I hear people say, get rid of the ACA. But that's not a solution in, in your mind, right? Right. I think that we can continue. People running for president say that on a certain side. That's right. not a solution in your mind. That's not a solution because how are people going to get the health care that they need? Going back to the point that it's a right and it's something that we need to have every day. It's not a solution. And just to even say. Even if it's imperfect. Even if it's imperfect. Just to say we're going to throw everybody into a risk pool. What, what does that mean? Or to say that we're going to decouple it from employment, which is, some, which is what some people are saying. OK, fine, but then who's going to pay for it? If you look at the ACA, right, almost everybody who's covered, newly covered under the, under the Affordable Care Act, that's being paid for by government. Minute left, I've heard some people uh, who see themselves as free market um, advocates, you've got a few seconds left, let the free market decide, you say? Let the, Let the free market decide the whole healthcare system. You don't need the government involved, you say? The, we're not talking about genes and hamburgers and things like that. We're talking about something that people need to survive. I think that with something as critical as that, there's an important role for regulation. Government has to be involved. Absolutely. And industry, hospitals, healthcare, insurance companies, right. health insurance companies, and pharmaceuticals have to be involved. And employers. 
And by the way, the uh, New Jersey Healthcare Quality Institute looking over all of this and trying to make sense of it for consumers. Uh, Linda Schwimmer, who is the president and chief executive officer of that uh, very solid organization. Well, thank you for joining us and breaking down a complicated but important topic. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, TD Bank, the New Jersey Education Association, PSE&G, New Jersey Sharing Network, NJM, and by the Russell Berry Foundation. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.